Hey everyone, welcome to this week's garden update, which is actually gonna be the very last one for spring 2022, because next week, oh, where has the time gone? It's gonna be summer here in Australia. I just discovered that my tripod <laughs> broke. So please bear with me this week if the camera's a tiny bit shaky. Okay, so I'm thinking today, uh, well, I'll definitely be showing you a garden harvest. And then I'm gonna cook up a bit of an unusual meal dish, more like a dish, using some of the cauliflower that I pick. Plus, we'll take a look at the cuff flowers that I harvested for the bouquets. They just went off to the garden centre, Tarmore Garden Centre today. And what else? Oh yeah, I have a really irritating bug back on the citrus trees. I'll show you how I try to manage them. Oh, they're so annoying, but aren't most pests, I guess. Anyway, please just sit back, relax for a few minutes, and let's get into it now. All looks calm and peaceful out here, but as we all know, looks can be deceiving because some of my citrus trees are under silent attack. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just over here, this lime tree, along with a couple of orange trees. I haven't actually checked the lemon tree yet. Well, there's pests hiding in here. I don't wanna to get too close. Oh, they hide well, don't they? I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, ah, sorry. <laughs> I get nervous of these things because they could spray you. Do you see that? That is a stink bug. Citrus bugs are considered a pest because what they do is they suck the sap out of these trees, which causes the flowers and or immature fruit to fall off prematurely which in turn, I guess, will affect your yield come harvest time. This small orange insect usually appears this time of year when your citrus fruit is just starting to develop. Their proper name is bronze orange bug and they are native to Australia. These bronze orange bugs are one of many species in the stink bug family. And they're given this name because they release a rather unpleasant odour if they feel like they're under attack. It's important that we're really careful not to get any of their liquid spray on our skin or in our eyes because it can actually burn your skin and it has been known to cause temporary blindness. I'm now going to talk about two organic ways of removing them from your citrus trees. Firstly, I have to mention that it's really important to protect your body before attempting to remove them. So make sure you've got eyewear, protective eyewear, gloves, long sleeve top, just cover up every part. You don't want any bit of your skin exposed. One of the simplest ways of removing them from your tree is to simply use your hands, take them off, then place them in a bucket of sooty water. And here's a bit of an unconventional way of removing them. You can do it with your vacuum cleaner, just suck them up. And then once the container is full in the vacuum cleaner, tip it out into that bucket of sooty water. You know what I was just thinking when I was looking at those stink bugs? How happy I am that I did not pull out the broccoli and cauliflower plants when they were looking so puny after they were attacked by the cabbage white butterfly caterpillar things <laughs> um, you know I tried to keep on top of it to remove any pests when I noticed them and now you know I'm being rewarded pretty much because was it last week or the week before I harvested some broccoli and this week I got to harvest a absolutely huge head of cauliflower let's go and take a look at that now garden harvest time I've got some cauliflower ready it's a whopper jeez it's heavy some beetroot. There's two varieties. This one's an Italian heirloom called Chioggia. Then there's this variety called Golden Detroit. Spring onions. Look how pretty their flowers are. Gorgeous. Next up, there's some carrots. I love pulling these out. Oh, beautiful. This one looks like it will be pretty big. Let's see. 
feels huge up. Oh. oh, not too bad. Got a little bonus there too. This one looks even bigger. Look at the size of it. Please be long. Oh, beautiful. Love fresh carrots. Can't beat them. I just want to harvest one last thing. A little garden posy of fragrant sweet peas. Here's that big head of cauliflower. I'm going to make a very quick recipe with half of it now. It's going to be cauliflower teriyaki bites. Okay, so I've just chopped up. It actually wasn't half. I would say that's about a third of the cauliflower into these little bite-sized pieces. Next up, I've got a egg whisked, a plate of flour and some breadcrumbs. Flour first, then the egg, just like this, and then cover it in a final layer of breadcrumbs. I just finished doing all of them and you know what I completely forgot to do? Season the flour. So you can put some seasoning in the flour. I like to use this all-purpose blend, but you can put like salt and pepper, um, onion powder, garlic, whatever you like. Um, <laughs> so I forgot that. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll sprinkle some of this over the top of the cauliflower. <laughs> so the next thing to do is pop this in the oven or the air fryer for 10 minutes. It's at 180 degrees Celsius. I'm only cooking these for myself, so I don't need that much. 10 minutes later, they are now partially cooked and starting to brown up. The next step is to brush them with some of this teriyaki sauce. I didn't make this from scratch. It's from a jar, but you can. There's lots of great recipes out there on the internet. And just go around each of these and give them a good coating of this delicious flavoring it's much easier if you take them out individually like this that way you're able to cover the entire piece of cauliflower i'm now going to put them back in for another five minutes they are finished here's the final dish I grabbed one of those spring onions and chopped it into small pieces, sprinkling it over the top of the teriyaki chicken. And here is a garlic dipping sauce to go along with this dish. It's Thursday evening and I've got these two buckets of flowers, which I picked this morning that I'll be putting together for arrangements to drop off at Tarmore Garden Centre tomorrow. I'm thinking I need to go and pick a few more bits and pieces, especially a bit of greenery and maybe a bit more color like yellow. Actually, I do have a really pretty yellow sunflower here. It opened fully, but I'm still gonna put it in. Got lots of these cornflowers. Picked quite a few cornflowers. Got some purple ones over here too. And some of these lovely baby pink. When it comes to putting the lilies in arrangements, I'm very conscious that lilies are actually poisonous to cats. All parts of the plant, apparently even the water that it sits in when it's put in the vase. So what I will do is I'll make a couple of arrangements without these beautiful big bold flowers in case there's any cat lovers who are interested in buying a bunch from Brent's Blooms. Look what I just did. I knocked off a petal from this this one as I was putting this stem in the bucket. Oh, that's annoying. It's okay though, I'll just cut it off. There's another bud there. Do you remember last year I planted a whole load of lilliums back in spring? And then we had that huge storm that came in and knocked off the tops and they didn't grow that summer. Well, the lilliums that are still in the ground, like this one here, have begun to pop up and flower. Unfortunately, I've got no idea what the name of this one is, but I think it's really pretty and I have the perfect combination of flower to go with that. This 
gorgeous sunflower self seeder from last year so those two are definitely going into the same bouquet this week i'll add in some of the darker colored snapdragons and maybe some of the purple cornflowers what else i don't know i'll have a look some of the achillea or yarrow i picked a bunch of that too this week yeah really nice selection and oh my goodness look at all of the status you've got the apricot status the pink one i think it's called rose light don't quote me on that and then there's the avalanche white there's also <laughs> Fabina bonariensis lots of this oh and something that hasn't done well after cutting it's down here this is the amaranthus um which one i think it's velvet curtain i just picked it to see if i could use it as just for a foliage and um, because it hasn't started to flower yet and i actually did this before and the same thing happened it flopped i think i tried it when the plants were a little bit smaller and it looks like it's going the same way i mean it's been in a cool in the kitchen with the aircon on all day everything else looks pretty good but the two stems or yeah two stems of this amaranthus haven't seemed to recover yet i'll see how they go overnight but it makes me a bit nervous adding these in two arrangements i think i'll leave them out i also picked a couple of stems of this Oh, Acanthus mollis. I'll put the name up on the screen. I showed you this plant ages ago, actually. We'll go and take a quick look in a sec. But this is the one that I bought for, I think it was one or two dollars back a couple of years ago in the autumn sales. And it's looking fabulous. I haven't showed you it yet, but um, I did a little bit of research. These are actually the smaller stems. They get really huge. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them in the arrangements. I did a bit of research and it says that they are good for cut flowers. So, so far so good. They're still looking great. They've been in the bucket of water for, I don't know, what is it? Eight hours or so. So yeah, I think I will use them. Here it is excuse the overgrown area there's a lot of my garden looking like this at the moment it's too hard to keep up on top of everything okay, so this is a perennial plant and it puts out these really huge tall spikes of flowers white and purple in color very pretty i have it growing underneath this enormous tree so as you can see it doesn't mind being in the shade at least my plant doesn't i'm not sure about this you know plant in general but i'm assuming it's the same and the other thing is it's able to handle you know it seems to be drought tolerant that's what i'm trying to say because you know generally if you plant under a really big tree the area around it the surrounds can get quite dry because the tree is taking all the moisture for its roots but despite that this plant seems very happy here and it's put on a really beautiful display of flowers this year you know what else i've discovered grows well under trees in my experience at least is nasturtium plants I think it was by accident, but I had a beautiful display of nasturtium flowers growing under our main orange tree about a year or two ago. And it was wonderful. It acted like a um, kind of living mulch. And also with nasturtiums, they are considered a trap crop or a sacrificial plant. So they attract the garden pests, like for example, aphids. So the aphids feast on the nasturtiums rather than say going near your brassica plants. So it just means you get really nice, healthy brassica plants that you'll be able to harvest. And it doesn't really matter too much about the nasturtiums if they don't look the best does it i don't know whether you spotted it but what you're looking at here is one of the first gladiolus that i've picked from the beds out in the front there's a couple more stems there and it's going to be interesting to see how i like incorporate them into the arrangements because they are quite long and the blooms go quite far up i'm thinking what i'll do is i'll remove the bottom ones because some of them actually are looking a little bit tired. 
like that one there in particular and then that means you know I'll kind of just be able to work with the top section so I don't need to worry about any of the flowers getting lost in the bottom of the bouquet I'm thinking I need to go and harvest a few more stems so I might do that and we'll see how we go probably end up coming back tomorrow <laughs> which will only be a few seconds for you and we'll take a look at what I arranged with these it's now Friday morning and here are the bunches of flowers that I put together last night I completely forgot about leaving one of the arrangements without any lilies so every bunch has a lily in it or at least a lily stem look this one opened since yesterday and then where's that beautiful orange one it's down here and the other one opened up too that's the second one this one here is getting a little bit squashed I need to get a bit better at um, arranging them so that they all the flowers sit nicely and you can see them all once I put the wrapping around it like this sunflower is getting a little bit squished too but I'm gonna leave it there because I think it looks really pretty I did end up picking a few extra flowers like over here there's this larkspur there's some more grevillea which I got from my friend's garden as well as the foliage from there too which is petostrum I got this variegated one and then also I don't know if I can find any oh yeah over here this kind of more plain green one too I'm going to head off now to Tarmore Garden Centre to drop these off and I'll be back in a few seconds for you a bit longer for me and I'll let you know how the flowers went last week I just got back from the garden centre so two out of the four bunches sold this week I guess I was kind of hoping that they'd all be gone especially after them all selling out last week but you know it probably comes in waves and at least you know people are purchasing them now the other great thing is because Christmas is coming up very soon it's the end of the school he year here in Australia and I'm thinking maybe there will be mums and dads and carers out there that are looking for a really nice fresh bunch of flowers to give to their children's teacher as a thank you gift you never know so let's see let's hope they all sell <laughs> let's hope next Friday I come home with an empty bucket I just recorded that little piece underneath this apple tree beautiful selection of apples this year I'm gonna to have to thin them out soon I think it was one of you guys last year said that I can actually cook up the immature apples that I remove from the tree I might look into that a little bit more and perhaps next Friday that's something I can do here on the channel I'm now over by the granny Smith apple tree in Mar and these ones too Ooh, I think I saw a cobweb there. I probably shouldn't be touching it with my bare hands. Anyway, I think that is about it for this week, everyone. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end. Remember, if you are new, please consider subscribing. And those of you who are regular here, thanks so much for your support. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, share with your friends. All of that really helps with the algorithm and get my content out there. Well, I'll see you again next Friday. Bye everyone.